All right, so what is an acid and a base? You wish they asked you this kind of question. It's like you'd wish, but no, they don't. All right, Arrhenius acid and base stuff. Um, this is an outdated definition, but basically, uh, ha, basically. Um, acids dissociate in water, so that means they break apart in water to make hydronium ions, which is the H+. Plus. H plus isn't a thing in water. It's always H3O plus, but it's written like this in shorthand. All right. And then the Arrhenius, uh, de that's the same as the Bronsted-Lowry definition. The problem is Bronsted, uh, excuse me, Arrhenius defined bases as dissociating or breaking apart. Like you have sodium hydroxide. That's an ion bond. It break apart in water and make hydroxide. And that's not true of all bases. Okay. So that's the issue. So um, I just told you that. Bronson, Lowry, acid and bases. Um, let's just get, this is a hydrogen ion. Are you, please, like, brace your athletic team. Um, <laughs> acids donate protons, so this is going to be my proton. Bases accept them. So we're going to be an acid and a base real quick. Come on up here, Grace. Yay. All right, so I'm going to be the acid. I'm HA and you're, you're B, so you have a base. Um, so I'm going to give, so I'm going to ask that I have a hydrogen. I'm going to give it to her. So now she, um, she was the base because she accepted it. So give it back. Let's do it again. So I'm HA and she's B. So here we can accept that, the proton. Now at this point, we're, we've made products. You see how we've gone through the chemical change here. At this point, I am A minus. I'm going to have a panic attack because I have an A minus. Um, I'm A minus, so I'm the conjugate base now, if you understand. And then she is B, H, so she's the, the conjugate acid. And the, the way you can see this is this reaction is going to go backwards. And so now she's going to donate the proton to me. Yay. And so she just acted like an acid. That's why she's the conjugate acid. And I just acted like a base because she got caught. You get it? All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on. This is, this is an easy lesson. Acids are sour. Everything's fun. So what's going on here? Um, what I want you to do on your little board, you don't have to write the whole equation out, but just use A for acid, B for base, CA for conjugate acid, and CB for conjugate base, and just label these four things in order, okay, for both of these reactions. Make sure you get that. So let's talk about what you got. Um, so in the first reaction, uh, that involves nitrous acid. You should be able to look at that and say, hmm, that's nitrous acid because no 2 one minus is nitrite. How are you feeling? Uh, Christian, tell me what was the, uh, what did you get for your letters across? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So how are you feeling about that? All right, cool. Um, and then on the second one, uh, Kat, tell me what you got. All right, cool. So, um, sounded good, you guys. So, check your work. 
Water can act as an acid or a base. Um, because it can, you can see here, it accepted a proton, so that makes it by definition an acid. And then here, you can see um, that it donated a proton, it donated one of its hydrogens to the um, ammonia, to make ammonia. And that's where ammonium comes from. Still okay? What? Cool. So strong acids completely dissociate in water, which is to say that they get only a forward arrow. So, you know, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Perchloric acid is a strong acid. They don't go, they don't have um, a reverse reaction, or the reverse reaction is extremely ne ne negligible. So they completely break up. They don't really go back to um, the reverse reaction doesn't really happen. So weak acids only partially break up. So this would be like hydrochloric acid. This would be like hydrofluoric acid. When you have a solution of hydrofluoric acid, its Ka value is 10 to the negative fourth, do you recall? If you don't, I'm just telling you right now. Um, let me make sure this A just turns into an F gray during acid base equilibrium. Um, not funny, sorry. Um, so hydrofluoric acid plus water gives you hydronium and then the fluoride ion. This actually is going to go back that way. And then since the equilibrium is 10 to the negative fourth, that means reactions are favorable to the left, okay? So um, it's a little bit, this makes the math for weak acids and bases. Oh, fun. Okay. Because mathematically we can do stuff like that. All right. That's clear. So you need to have these memorized. This point blank, this is non negotiable. Here they are. And they make sense. So, um, uh, perchloric acid, and then there was a song in your homework. Yeah. Um, hydroiodic, um, hydrobromic, hydrochloric, nitric, and sulfuric. And they kind of make sense when you think about, like, why they have them. So, um, if you have four oxygens and you have an electronegative um, central atom, right, it's going to be strong. Um, and then this is um, the whole distance thing and electronegativity thing. Um, so, non nitrogen is very electronegative, so that's what's going on here. Strong bases. Um, so, if you look at the periodic table, strong bases make a B. And so, let me show you that. It's kind of handy. So, strong bases, again, are uh, a metal bonded to a hydroxide. So, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, okay? And these are all hydroxide bases. And so, it makes a B. Hydrogen is a Moving on, um, this is the point in class where somebody asked me, does Francium make it? Yeah, go get some Francium. No. Um, weak bases. So do you remember the Arrhenius equation? The Arrhenius equation. Um, that's something different. Arrhenius definition of uh, bases is wrong. Here's the deal. So like a, this is a methyl mean, but like ammonia, which is NH3. Let's just make this ammonia real quick. That make you feel better? Ammonia is, you know, stuff you use to clean. You clean Windex and it's a base. Right? And then if you use Windex, it's slippery and it's a base. Ah, uh, we ain't learning that. But um, ammonia is a weak base. If I put ammonia in water, NH3, is it going to dissociate or break up to make hydroxide ions? No. It does still deprotonate water. It does deprotonate water to get a hydrogen ion. So it does end up making hydroxide ions in the solution, but it's not because you put it in water and it dissolves. 
So that's why the Iranian is still cut. The Iranian's definition is wrong. It still um, accepts a proton, but it um, it doesn't excel, it itself um, make hydroxide just by breaking up. How are you guys feeling? But this is this is methyl or dimethylamine. These are two methyl groups: CH three, CH three, and then NH is a amine group. All right. Um, strong acids have weak conjugate bases. Weak acids have strong conjugate bases. Let me let me just that sounds terrible. Let me explain. So <clears throat> let's make this hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid plus water gives you hydronium ions and chloride ions. Now this is my conjugate base right here. <clears throat> this reaction doesn't go backwards, does it? Not really. Remember who was a strong acid. So for this to be a strong base, it would have to be able to get a hydrogen and accept it. But this reaction doesn't go it doesn't go in reverse. So this is going to be a really weak base. So we can fact that the reverse reaction doesn't occur. You see what I'm saying? So on that note, let me tell you a little secret. The strong acid will be on the same side as the strongest base. Is not water better at accepting uh, hydrogens than chlorine as written in this equation? Yes, it is. It doesn't go that way. The strong acid and the strong base are always on the same side. And the Ka, I mean, I don't know the Ka for um, hydrochloric acid, but it's 10 to the, a, a very, oops, there, I'll fix it. One, one times 10 to the, it's probably to the 30th or 35th or something. It's a lot. So wouldn't that tell me that products are favored? You can look at a Ka and then if it's a product of favored, then you know your strong acid and your strong base are the weak acids. They're so strong, in fact, that all that stuff we talked about, filling hydrogens and getting dopamine, all that stuff is happening because they're strong. And so we don't have a whole lot of um, reactions. All right, so strong acids have weak conjugate bases because, like I said, if it's a strong acid, it's going to completely dissociate, and that reverse reaction is going to be negligible. So its conjugate base isn't going to take the hydrogen back. Uh, weak acids have strong conjugate bases. Um, acids that are middle have middle. All right, so let's check this out. We know methane is a pretty weak acid. It's really weak, 10 to the negative 48. Um, as we go up in acid strength, the base strength is going to decrease. And here, if I go back the other way, these are the conjugate bases. See them? Base strength increases. So water's conjugate base is hydroxide, and I think we know that hydroxide is a strong base. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, mid and mid. And it said that. Uh, Middle have middle, and so like ammonium or hydrofluoric acid or even acetic acid, which is vinegar, they're they're weak acid. Like if we're saying the six strong acids, they're not one of those, but they're mid strength. They're not as weak as methane, you know. So um, they have middle strength bases because it's in the middle. How you feeling? All right, so the stronger base is the one that's going to accept that proton. I just explained it. Um, there's always two bases. You have your base and your conjugate base. We already talked about that. Um, in this equation, hydrobromic acid um, donates a proton to water and make hydronium and bro, uh, bromide. So hydrobromic acid is a strong acid in the right? We, this in the list that you have to memorize. So the Ka of this is large. Products are favored. The strongest acid is here, the strongest base is here. This would be then the weakest acid and the weakest base. This reaction reverses it. Okay. Um, so, anyway, same here. Um, H2O and ammonia 
compete for protons. NH3 is the stronger base, so it wins. And so this reaction, it's telling me that ammonia is the strongest base. And ammonia, that makes sense. Like ammonia is the strongest base. Um, and so really the Ka, if this is the way they're writing it, um, or this is going to be a Ka, the K, the, the equilibrium constant for this one, if these are the strongest ones, that means this reverse reaction is going to happen more often. Okay? And so that means that um, the K value would be a, a, a small So this would be my strongest base. This would be my strongest acid. It doesn't give me the K number, but you need to go ahead and start thinking about that. Are you okay? Um. And so this is why they're stronger. We already did this. We've done this five times. Let's do it again. Um, acid strength, if I'm going down a group, acid strength is going to increase if they go down a group because the Coulombic attraction between the hydrogen and what it is bonded to will decrease, which will make it such that the dipole interaction with the oxygen on the water will be strong with the hydrogen, will be stronger than the covalent bond. Can you hang with me? Okay. Um, so conjugate base strength, so if we look at this, the conjugate bases are getting weaker because the acid is getting stronger. HI is the strongest acid in this list. I mean, I know it's not listed in the acids, but HI is the um, strongest acid. So conjugate bases are going to get weaker as the acid gets stronger. Um, and the, the reason for this, right, if you think about the size of these ions, here's fluorine, right? It's middle, or fluoride, and chloride is bigger. Corona is bigger, and iodine, or iodide is the biggest. And so if I'm a hydrogen ion floating around, right, you have to draw me in to make a bond. And so that's a large distance, that's the largest distance, less, and then that one probably has to be the biggest. Hydrogen is still smaller than uh, chloride, but look. Um, moving on. So oxo acids, we already talked about these. There is where you have um, just, this would be, I don't like the letter Y at the beginning, but this would be like my hypochloric acid. Right, so this would be like my chloric acid. So you're either going to have one oxygen or more than one. And as we add more oxygens, uh, the, the acid gets stronger. So we just talked about that. Oh, and if I'm uh, if I'm looking at everything, everything is you know um, equal. Uh, the more electronegative the the atom that is bonded to the oxygen is, the the acid becomes stronger because they're pulling the electrons away from the hydrogen bond or hydrogen that is bonded to the oxygen. Are y'all good with this? This is the same thing with the cobalt. Just kind of going back over it. All right, as you add more oxygens, the K is going to increase because it's more electronegative. Um, this is a carboxyl group. This R could be anything. It's typically like a low. Like if this was, um, <clears throat> this is acetic acid. And you know, acetate is C2H3O2. And acetic acid, like a lot of times you'll see it written as CH, C, H, C2H3O2. That's acetic acid, but really it's CH3, CH3. That's why it's CH3 and then COOH. That's that. And then when you write it getting um, deprotonated, you will write CH3, COO minus, because the hydrogen here is this hydrogen. You see this a lot for acid. Which is why, like, people are like, why do you want acetate? I'm crazy. Why can't you just write it like that? Because it's okay. Moving on. Do, 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 la, la, la. All right, um, so look at here. This little methyl group is a C, CH3, HHH. -H -H. That looks good. And then here I have C and then 3S. Okay, so this is going to be a stronger acid because the electronegativity of these fluorines is going to have that inductive effect of C 
going to pull the electron density away from this bond so that this can be deprotonated. I mean that, of course, fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. So this would be a, you know, if they throw a, two big molecules up on the AP fan, you know, you're not in organic chemistry, but they can do it to you. So you have to be able to look at it and kind of think, okay, what's electronegative? What's going on? Um, good times. All right, so this is where things get real. <clears throat> All right, let me just, you're good. If I have two water molecules, I'm looking for something. Um, if I have two water molecules, <laughs> most water in water is just water. But you have some little rogue water molecules. And what ends up happening, if I have two water molecules, if this one, is attracted to the negative dipole of this oxygen, it actually be removed, deprotonated, and you would be left from the two original waters with a hydroxide and a hydrogen. So two waters can become a hydroxide and hydrogen. Okay. Are you gonna laugh at that? And this happens, um, I'm gonna go away from this screen, I'm gonna make it okay. Everything's so fine. So let me show you what that looks like. So it looks like two waters gives, and that's a liquid, okay, gives me a hydroxide and a hydrogen. Okay. The KW, which is a new word, the KW, which is the equilibrium constant for the auto ionization of water. Auto happens by itself, ionization of water. So I'm going to say it again. The equilibrium constant for the auto happens automatically. Ionization of water is 1 times 10 to the negative 14, which means that this reaction is going to lie to the left. Equilibrium. So that means that I'm going to have mostly water in water, but not all water in water. Are you serious? Yes. Okay. The equilibrium constant is really small. That means reactions of water. What? That means that in water, you have mostly water because right, yeah, reactions of phase because you'll have some of these. All right, now look at here. Check it out. Let's write the equilibrium expression for water. So Kw is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration times the hydronium ion concentration. Right? Now, what about the water? Do I put that in there? It's a liquid. Put it in there. I wish it fell. Um, so that's it. So Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Um, if you've been in apes, then you know how to do math in your head or on paper. And if you haven't, I'm about to have to tell you. Um, when you mm -hmm. multiply exponents, you add them. When you multiply things with in scientific notation, you add the exponents. So what? It would be 1 times 10 to the what on each of these? Because they have to be the same, right? So at equilibrium in water, the molarity of hydroxide and hydronium is this, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is the molarity of hydroxide in water. That's how we tell so this, So it happens, there's some, but it's not a lot. This is what happens at room temperature. This KW is only good for room temperature. 25 degrees Celsius. Yeah, 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 you could. That's exactly right. So that's what all this is saying. But I just made it go down a little smoother. Um, so in pure water, hydronium is going to be 10 to the 7th. Hydroxide is going to be 10 to the, excuse me, negative 7th. And then they have to be equal because it's water. Um, so anyway, this KW is a constant. If you know the concentrations in a solution, 
um, of any solution of hydronium or hydroxide, you can fill it in, right? So you know this number. You'll always know this number, and you'll know one of these, and you can fill it in and solve for the real simple three variable equation. It's okay. All right, so check this out. Um, I'm going to make this go away and do it myself. All right, so on this, the concentration of hydroxide in a solution is found to be 1.4 times 10 to the negative 11. And so I, um, and it gives me 25 degrees. You have to be getting 25 degrees or a different KW value, which don't get me. So anyway, um, so KW is equal to the, um, and this is on the formula sheet, by the way. On the KW sheet, uh, does it say water and hydronium? It doesn't. It does. It does. So see, you're good. It even tells you what's what. You're good. Um, so 1 times 10 to the negative 14 is equal to uh, whatever this is times... <clears throat> So now I'm going to divide both sides by 1.4 times 10 to the negative 11. Make sure you use parentheses, and that will allow me to solve for the hydronium ion concentration. ion concentration is 7.1 times 10 to the negative 4. Make sure you get that and just track it properly. How y'all doing? Doing good? Cool. Today's an easy day. So that's all the work that I just did, you know, just not with my voice. Um, so someone asked me before I even got to this one, they say, um, they said, do you, do you have to write hydrogen? Do you have to write hydronium? No, you don't have to do it either way, but listen to me. This is, I remember grading this test last year, and this is what happened, okay? You need to pick one and stick with it. And I would highly recommend you pick the second one. First of all, that's the formulas on the formula sheets. Second of all, Liquid water is never going to be in your equilibrium expression or in your ice table, which you're going to have to use not today, but Monday with all this other stuff, right? Then also, when you go to balance the equation, if they ask you to write the, the equation for the dissociation of whatever acid, if you write water over here and you write an H plus right here, your equation is not going to be balanced. It would be missing a hydrogen and an oxygen, better see. So if you put water over here, you better put hydronium because you won't have enough hydrogens and oxygens. Or to say also, if you put water here or if you put a hydrogen here, you'll have extra hydrogen oxygen. You understand? So you need to do the second one. I recommend it highly. But if you want to do the first one because you like that water, then you better put H3O+. plus. See what I'm saying? Otherwise, your equation won't be balanced. I, had, I remember grading this test last year. I remember five or six people mess it up. They put water, they wanted to put water, but then they didn't put H3O, they put hydrogen. So these are the same thing as shorthand, so just go with that. All right, pH. The letter P is, is talking about um, the power of hydrogen from French here, but listen to me. We're going to have to do, you know how Ka is the acid strength thing? You know what I'm talking about? There's PKAs, PKBs. There's P's, there's P's everywhere. Let me tell you what P means in math. P means you take the negative log of it. P means negative log. Mm -hmm. You need to write that down. You need to think about it every night before you go to sleep. So you know what pH really means? You have power, hydrogen, whatever. It means the negative log of hydrogen is what it means. So pH is the negative log of hydrogen. 
And uh, hey, check out your formula sheet, see what the formula for pH is. Oh, yeah. It's a negative log constant. When you get to pKa, you should know you know what I'm talking about, you know what's important. You're going to push the button to negative log and track it, and then put pay in it. You need to take the negative log, okay? That's going to be really interesting for the rest of your life or the next life. You need negative log. All right, so anyway, um, a solution with a hydrogen ion concentration of 10 to the negative 4 has a pH of 4. Um, basically, a pH of 5 is 10 to the negative 5th. I, I hope you did your homework. Can I show you how logs work real quick? So, do you know how I just told you that something with a pH of uh, 4 has a hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 4th? You're going to have to take multiple choice tests without a calculator. And on the AP exam, you don't need a calculator either. And you're going to have to estimate, or sometimes get exactly, the pH without a calculator, and this is what you're having to do. Can you do this right now without a calculator? No. Is the answer no to your question? Can you can you calculate this without a calculator right now? Honestly, children of the world, can you? Yeah, I mean too. Well, anybody else? Well, what you can too? It's four. How do you know that? Okay, but. So, if you didn't have a calculator, you couldn't remember it from the movie, or what if this number was 3? Mm, JK, right? Okay. I feel like more It's really, it's, that's going to be an estimation game. I'm going to show you how to do that as we move along, but let me show you how to do this easy one, okay? So, what you have to do when you have, okay, so think about the number 1. That's the number 1. Go with it or make up your own picture of it. <laughs> it's a tree. That's the number one still. And you know how when you draw a tree in your garden, you have to put a, a hole in the log? That's a 10. Do you see the 10? 1 and 0? <laughs> make up your own story if you don't have a calculator. Oh, okay. And there's a little less limb on the tree. Extra credit. Here's the sunshine. Whatever. This is 10 to the negative 4. It. You take the log of it, you have to chop the tree down, and it falls to the ground. And so the log of 10 to the negative 4 So the negative log of this makes it 4. So the pH is 4. I made that up. So basically, when you have to take the log of something, you got to chop the tree down, okay? And then you get to bring that exponent on down. And just for fun, now listen to me. If, let's just say, let's just say this number right here was an 8. 8 times 10 to the negative 4, you don't have a calculator. Let's just say. Is that not almost 1 times 10 to the negative 3rd? Because you're getting, you see what I'm saying? You got it? So the pH would be between 3 and 4 and closer to 3. Got it? Yeah, you won't have to do that. So if you don't got it, I'm going to keep doing it and you'll get it next time. Right? Because 9 times 10 to the negative 4 is almost 10 times 10 to the negative 4, which is 10 times 10 to the negative 3rd. And then you chop that. I got. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, so P means take the negative log of it, and log means to chop the tree down. Okay. Um, so find the pH of pure water. Um, and so we know that the hydrogen ion concentration of pure water, I just showed you how to do that, was 1 times 10 to the negative 7, right? 
If I'm finding the pH of that, pH means um, to take the negative log of it. Log means to chop the tree down. Okay? That's how the pH of water is set. Name that. All right, and that's why the pH scale goes from 0 to 14, too. Because the at the the... The equilibrium constant for the ionization of water is 10 to the negative 14. That's why the pH goes is 14. All right, so that's a thing. That's good. All right, whatever. There. All right, so here is a lot of fun. If you know the pH of the solution, it's 5.63. All right, so here we go. 5.63. You fill in what you know, and this is hope for the best, okay? Find the hydrogen ion concentration. So pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So this is what I'm solving for. Do you remember how we had done the natural log and like the inverse operation of natural log with the E button? When you have a base 10 log, which is what this is, mm -hmm, um, the, the inverse of this is to 10 to the, so if I do 10 to this side and 10 to this side, the log goes away. Boop. So I should have probably done one thing first. Or to make this, you should simplify it first. Look, can I back up and punt? I'm solving for the log of hydrogen ion concentration. I do need to get rid of this negative one first. I apologize. So divide both sides by negative one. So negative 5.63 is equal to the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And now I'm going to raise both sides as an exponent on 10. That makes the log go away. So 10 to the negative 5.63 is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration. Just make sure you can do that this time. And listen, here's the deal. I don't have a calculator. I don't remember the answer from my period. But it's probably, should be 10 to the negative, it should be 10 to the negative, help me, it should be like 7-ish times 10 to the negative 5th, 8-ish maybe, 6-ish, what is it? What is that for? <laughs> What was the exponent? I'm a little rusty on this. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I can see the negative six now. I was thinking about it backwards because I, I had to show you the other way. I'll get better and then I'll help you with that. But bottom line, the exponent in your head should be either negative five or negative six because this is bigger than one. You see what I'm saying? One times ten to the negative fifth would be a pH of five. Right? Okay. So I'm sorry I didn't do that just right. I do I am good at that, but I just wasn't good at it right now. All right. So, um, and it being on a logarithmic scale, it's not like it's a straightforward multiplication kind of thing. I don't know how to explain it to you. Um, but here's the pH formula. I already explained that three times. Here's the pH scale. Cool thing is 0.1 molar, which is 10 times, 1 times 10 to the negative 1, the pH of that is 1. See what I'm saying? This is 1 times 10 to the negative 1 molar. Negative 1, chop the tree down, pH is 1. One molar hydrochloric acid has a pH of zero because uh, one is equal to 10 to the zero power. Too much. It's too much. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how we do this in context. And so if we have a strong acid, it's going to completely dissociate. I'm really sorry about that. If I have a strong, I don't know what that is. If I have a strong acid, it's going to completely dissociate. 
which means it's going to break up. So every mole of hydrochloric acid is going to produce a mole of hydrogen. Okay. And so <clears throat> that means that my hydrogen ion concentration here, so the pH would equal the negative log of 2 and a half. Because this is going to make, and it's a one-way arrow, that. And so each mole of this makes one mole of that. And so the molarity of hydrogen ions, once it dissolves in water, is the same. Okay, let's fill that in. Now this only works for strong acids. Weak acids don't break up like that. So now you got to make an isolate and try. Let's see. Um, so anyway, punch the buttons in your calculator. One molar hydrochloric acid solution had a pH of zero. So this is going to be a negative number. The pH scale goes above 14, which goes below zero. That's awesome. It does? Yeah. And the reason. Yeah, it is. All right, so see if you get 0 0.04 or negative 0 0.40, excuse me, negative, 4 point, negative 0 0.40. Got it? So let me tell you something important. This has two sig figs. When you're doing pH, only the decimal places are sig figs. So if this, if this um, happened to be negative 2.40, that still, as a pH, only has two sig figs. Only the decimal places in pHs are significant. So moving on. All right, so same idea here. See if you can do this one by yourself. I'm going to hide the answers for a second for you, and then I'll show it to you. I know that that sulfuric acid has two hydrogens, but only one breaks off at a time, so you're still doing the same thing. Um, this is strong acid, so the molarity of the acid is equal to the molarity of the hydrogen ions in the solution after the acid has dissociated. Still good? Great. All right. This is not a big deal. Y'all remember molarity is just moles divided by liters? That's no problem, right? Okay. So find the pH of the solution. Um, you know, I'm not skip this in second period, so I'm okay with just waiting here. This is a little bit more math. I think I can wait. Minus, I'll just wait till Monday because I'm gonna have to do it with them. It's really easy. Okay, I'll just do it with you. All right, so um, here we go. So if you mix um, 500 milliliters of 0.15 molar HBr, that's a strong acid, so it's going to dissociate completely. So that means that my concentration of hydrogen is also this, right? And if I mix it with 250 milliliters of 0.2 molar nitric acid, that's also going to make the, the hydrogen ion concentration this because, you know, it's strong. What I'm going to have to do, though, do you see how different volumes here? I'm going to have to find the moles of acid in this and the moles of acid in that. And then molarity is moles divided by liters. So the liters, you can already tell, are 0.750 liters. I hope you can see it that fast. Because 250 plus 500 is 750, and then that's one liter, so it's 0.75 liters. All right, anyway, so let's go ahead and go to moles. Um, so what we're going to do is um, for the hydrobromic acid, I'll go do the moles for, of that for you. Um, you have 0 0.500 liters of that, um, and then one liter is 0 0.150 moles. I have a 0.15 moles of HBr, and so uh, that's 0 0.075. 
bowls of HDR. And it's and really I'm talking about hydrogen at this point, right? I'm just going there. I'm gonna fix it. Okay, so far so good. Alright, so let's go ahead and find the moles of the hydrogen and the nitric acid. So I have 0 0.250 liters, and then my molarity is I'm gonna have 0 0.20 moles of hydrogen and one liter. And so this is 0 0.050. I don't have a calculator. I didn't do this last period, so check the math. Good. You know how I did that so fast, right? 20% of 25 cents is a nickel. This is not money, but my kids get to pray. Anyway, so all together, I have a... Uh, Point one two five moles of hydrogen, and then that is in point seven five zero oh liters. And at this point, you divide, which is I think it's one six, which is point one six is the concentration. And that's my molarity. I'm not done yet. I'm gonna put that molarity into the pH formula. So. The pH is between like one and two. Because point one molar is a pH of one. So when you divide this out, you get the hydrogen ion concentration equals, I should have done it like this. The hydrogen ion concentration equals, that's why it starts over again. The hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 0.16. And so then the negative log of 0.167 is the pH. Are y'all okay? Are you okay, Victoria? Are y'all following me? So is it between 1 and 2? Or no, it's between 0 and 1 because it's more concentrated. Yeah. This isn't confusing at all. Um, yes. And so you would have to, the pH should have a one or a zero and then two decimal places. So 0.77. So all that stuff as I'm talking through the mental math out loud, like, oh, this should be around, this should be around. You need to be able to do that just to keep yourself, I mean, maybe you won't be exact, but it'll keep you from writing like a bajillion for this answer and being okay with it. All right. Um, last thing. Um, when you find pH, do you know how we just found pH of that solution? Did we ignore the hydrogen ions or hydronium ions that are floating around in water all the time? We totally did. And let me tell you why. Um, when we look at the auto-ionization of water, here it is. If I added some acid to this, wouldn't I be adding this ion, which would shift equilibrium to the left, would make more water and take the hydrogens that are already small out of the solution? Uh-huh. That's called the common ion effect. I'll see you next week on that. Um, but are you feeling me just at that basic level? So anyway, we can ignore what water's doing when we calculate pH is what I'm saying. Um, so pOH is not a big deal. It's the same thing. What I tell you P was? Negative log of. So pOH is a negative log of hydroxide ion concentrations. So here, that's a strong base. You're just going to put one and a half in there and push buttons in your calculator and get the pOH. That's all you're going to do. How are you feeling? Look. Plug it in. Get a number. Now, listen to me. we got to think about this, okay? One molar, um, one molar sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, or excuse me, no, that's right, has a pH of 14. A pH of 14. Do y'all know that pH and pOH has to add up to 14? That's in your homework. If you didn't do it yet, that's the thing. Look on your formula sheet. It says pH plus pOH equals 14. Do you see it? If the pOH of this is, excuse me, I'm going to move my hand, my thing. If the pOH of this is negative 18 or 0.18, this is negative 18 cents, right? If they have to add together to give me 14, what's the pH? Would it be $14.18? Take away 18 cents and I get 14. See what I'm saying? So the P 
pH is 14.18. If the pOH is negative 0.8. So you're thinking, you're always going to be thinking base is back a high pH, but pOH is just flipped on the other side. So it's going to be a small number if it's a base. So same thing. Same idea, nothing different. It's just that this is hydroxide now. And then you do have to know that they add up to be 14. So that's it. Um, here comes your answer key. You got to do everything. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. At least we got done.